Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we'll be looking at population clusters. We're going to be looking at regions of the world that have high concentrations of people living there. We'll be looking at what makes these areas unique and what's happening there both economically and also with their population growth and kind of talk about some of the reasons why this might be happening. So sit back, take out your guided notes, you can find them in the description below. They'll go right along with the video, help you learn better, and now let's figure out where everyone's living. Now people live all over the world. And geographers, when they're trying to understand how people are distributed throughout the world, they're going to focus on two factors. And those two factors are concentration and density. Now, we're going to talk a lot more about concentration in this video. We're going to be looking at density at a later time. So check back later for the density video. But geographers have a bunch of tools to help them see concentration and also density. And one of their most important tools is census information. Now, the census is collected by the government normally once a decade. And with this, it shows a variety of things that can help geographers. It shows our age ranges, gender breakdown, it can show economic levels, it can also show just heritage. And so different things are collected on the census to be able to provide to geographers, to politicians, and to anyone else who would like to use the information. A lot of times the census data is used even in just figuring out districts. So for example, in the United States, our electoral college system is based off some of the population sizes in certain counties and areas throughout the United States. Now we'll get into more of the electoral college and gerrymandering and all these different things and redistricting later on in the course. So you don't have to worry about that yet, but these things will be coming back. Now for this video, we're gonna be talking about the parts of the world that we see the main clusters. So we have four main clusters around the world today. This is where we have a lot of activity happening, especially with population. And these are South Asia, East Asia, Europe, and Southeast Asia. So we're gonna break each one of these clusters down and we're gonna talk about what's happening in these areas right now. Throughout this unit, you're gonna see a bunch of different themes. Now in this video, I want you to start to try and pick them out. I'm gonna be talking about all these different regions in the world and what I want you to do is try to see how are they maybe similar and different? What is causing these areas to be our four main population clusters? What things are going on maybe behind the scenes that most people don't think about? Look for stuff on the economy, the environment, what is the government doing with the population? What is the role of genders? So what's going on there? How are people being treated? These themes will come up throughout all of our stuff that we talk about in this unit and will continue to come up in units down the road. So make sure to start looking for those as we start talking about East Asia. Our first population cluster that we're talking about is in East Asia. Now this is a perceptual region and some examples of countries that would fall under here would be China, the Korean Peninsula, Japan, Majority of people here actually live on the coastlines. We also have some people, especially in China, that are living alongside the rivers. Now, over 25% of the world lives in this region. That's a lot of people. And what we see is a lot of different things happening with the economies, and it actually depends on our urbanization. In China, where we have more rural communities, we're seeing the economic kind of driver be agriculture. A lot of people are farmers, and that is what they focus on their careers. However, what we have started to see in Japan and Korea, where there's a lot less space and more urbanization, we've seen a shift from agriculture into service jobs and industrial jobs. And so we have seen a lot of changing factors occur. We've also seen in this area some control over populations, with China in particular. Now we'll go over China's one child, two child policy later on in another video and also in class. But it's important to realize that there is some government control over the population, which has kind of kept it at bay. Whereas Japan and Korea, they haven't needed to do that, especially with Japan, they've started to see actually a decline in their population growth. Now we'll talk about that later in another video as well with population pyramids and also the demographic transition. So check out those for more information on that. But this region of the world, we have a little bit split and it all depends on urbanization and also our rural communities. The next population cluster we're talking about also makes up over 25% of the world's population. This is South Asia. Now in South Asia, we're talking about Bangladesh, Pakistan, and the majority of the people here live in rural communities. We are also seeing a big focus on agriculture. 
Now, we still have a lot of people who live alongside the coast, but we also have huge densities of people who live alongside the Indus and the Ganges rivers. And one of the things that's happening in this part of Asia compared to East Asia, which we just talked about, is we are seeing massive population growth. And that's because the government has not stepped in and controlled it at all. We don't have family planning and we don't have legal laws in most of these areas that force families to stay small. Now things could change in the future and it'll be interesting to follow this region of the world as it continues to experience massive growth. A lot is changing here and it's very important for us to kind of have a good understanding because the world economy will be impacted by this part of the world. Our next population cluster we're talking about is Europe. Now this is a huge region. There's over four dozen countries that are a part of this region. We're talking about Russia, France, Spain as just a couple examples. Now this area is very unique, especially compared to Asia of what we've been talking about, East Asia and South Asia. Here we have urbanization. It's actually estimated that around 75 to 90% of the population now lives in cities in this region. So what we are seeing is some new trends. We're seeing actually a decrease in our population growth. We're seeing less focus on agriculture and more focus on industrialized jobs or service jobs. The majority of the people here still, just like in South and East Asia that we've talked about, live on a coast or near a river. However, there is one unique thing about this region as well. We have a lot of populations, clusters, that are formed around coal fields and our resources. Part of this is because of the unique history of this region, where the Industrial Revolution happened. So we have major cities that have formed not necessarily just by waterways, which other parts of the world, that is traditionally where we see them. Big population densities here too are focused around some of the big cities. So we're talking about London and Paris. And for the most part, our population growth here is actually declining. And the unique thing to remember about this area too is again, that focus on, it's not just the riverways that people are located on, it's the manufacturing and the resources as well. And again, that connects back to the past. So I know I've already repeated myself a couple times here, but that's because this is a unique area and it's important to understand the difference of what's happening here compared to other parts of the world. Because that's definitely going to come back in this class. Our last main population cluster is Southeast Asia. Now with Southeast Asia, we're talking about the Indian Ocean kind of to the Pacific. What's in between? Malaysia, Indonesia, these would be examples of some of the countries that would fall under this region. Now, the majority of the people here are living on a coastline, on a river, on a delta. So again, focusing on water. Not necessarily like Europe that was also have the resources that some people were living around. We also have in this region a high amount of agricultural work. We have a lot of people living in rural communities. We do not have a lot of urbanization. And we have a lot of population growth. Hopefully you can start to kind of see some trends throughout our four main clusters. There's a lot going on. And you can kind of tell maybe, and if you can't yet, it's not a big deal because we're gonna go over it in more videos, of what's going on for the future of these regions. And maybe some economic factors and also some locational factors that are leading to these populations to change. Now, we've talked about all the four main ones, but there's also other parts of the world. So we're gonna get into, for a bonus round, the runner-ups. Woo! I know you're super excited because population clusters are the best and I don't know why you wouldn't be. So enough of this, let's go figure out what's going on in North America. Now while these areas might not be our four main population clusters, they're definitely worth noting. We're going to start with North America. For North America, the majority of people actually live in the northern eastern part of the United States or the southern eastern part of Canada. Our coastlines are actually the ones that have the highest concentration as well, the east and west coastlines. Now throughout the United States and also Canada, as you go more inland, people are pretty sparsely distributed. Now we still see population clusters around normal riverways that connect out to the ocean. So that's where you'll see some of the bigger cities. Now for North America too, this area is pretty urbanized. We're seeing a lot of economic growth and development and a shift away from agriculture into more industrial jobs and service jobs. The next region that we're gonna talk about is South America. 
Now, South America has also the majority of their people living on coastlines. And the further inland you go, the more you start to see agriculture play a dominant role in society. You also see more rural communities and less urbanized. Actually, for South America right now, Brazil has actually the biggest megacity that's booming in that region. The last region we're going to talk about then is Africa. Africa, the majority of people here are still focusing on agriculture. We have the majority of people actually concentrated near the African coast. And also actually for all the countries right now, Nigeria is one of the countries that has kind of the highest concentration of people. So this is just a couple quick things on some of the runner ups around the world. Hopefully you have a good understanding now of kind of what's happening in different regions of the world. You can see different themes with economics, with agriculture, with our population growth rates possibly. We haven't gotten into specifics yet, but maybe. Even the government and also like urbanization. I'm Mr. Sin. I hope this video helps you better understand what's happening around the world. Until next time, I'll see you online. Make sure on your way out, by the way, to hit that subscribe button, support the channel, and that way also you'll get notifications when I post new videos. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.